Hello Makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe, and if you've ever wanted to have an explosion of color in your face, well, here it is. <laughs> so we're back with a review, and this time we're gonna talk about the TiVo Flash. I've had the TiVo Flash now for quite a few months, and to be completely honest, I've put off this to review because in my mind I kept thinking I don't have enough prints, I haven't tested enough, until I collected all the prints uh, that I did with it, and I realized I, yeah, I definitely have enough now. So TiVo sent me two types of flash here. One was 50% assembled, one was 98% assembled, and I both assembled them in one live stream a few months back. A bit of specs on the machine. The, uh, the build volume on the TiVo flash is 235 by 235 on the X and Y, and 250 on the Z. It is extremely compact and also looks looks very pleasing to the eye with some anodized aluminum plates uh, just to make it look better. Um, extruded aluminum profiles all around to make it quite rigid. Now there are many variations that you can get this printer in, but the most basic version, which will set you back about 300 euros, comes with the build plate volume that I had just mentioned. It also comes with a um, uh, Clone Titan extruder. It does come with also with a Clone Volcano hot end. It has a single Z-axis lead screw, an AC powered heat bed, which means that reaching high temperatures is only gonna take a couple of minutes. It does have a USB port in order to have it tethered to a PC, or you can also print via SD card. Now in this case, you can get that version either at 50% assembled or 98% assembled, and I'll get to that in a bit. But the ones I have here, this one on my left was 50% assembled, and this one on my right was 98% assembled. And these are the full works editions. So on top of what I just mentioned, you also get a secondary Z-axis lead screw, you get the BL touch for auto bed leveling, and you also get TMC 2100 drivers. And that's where the price gets bumped up a bit because you do pay 440 euros for the 50% assembled version. Now, as you can see in front of me, um, I have printed a lot, uh, a lot, a lot, so many things and so many different materials. Uh, I've obviously printed quite a lot of PLA and they turned out beautiful. The one thing that this printer has, which is just amazing, is its 0.15 millimeter layer heights. The watchtower that I have here right in front of me, the one that I had painted and I did a, um, a couple of episodes about, that was printed on the, um, on the flash and it was printed at 0.15 millimeter. It did not require any post processing whatsoever because the print was just ridiculously good looking. And that's definitely one of the, the main points to take away from this printer after this review, is that if you want something very detailed that requires very little post-processing, the 0.15 millimeter layer heights really stand out on this printer. I've done quite a few complex models at 0.15. I think most of the things that I've printed was at that resolution because it just screams detail. You have the half moon uh, model as well, which just looks ridiculously insane. And it, it turned out absolutely beautiful. Now I have to say that um, that was my third attempt. So on this printer, I've had two failed attempts. And, and they're here. These are the failed attempts that I had. And there's a very specific reason why these happened. It wasn't exactly the printer's fault, it was my fault, and I'll explain. I, I kind of tried to use a, um, a profile on my Simplify 3D, which was very similar to the Mark III. Uh, the Mark III has like travel speeds of 180 millimeters a second, which is just way too fast for uh, for this printer to handle. And what was happening is after printing, although it did print quite a bit, I was getting layer shifts because it was just way too fast um, in order to travel at 180 millimeters a second. So I had to reduce that down to 100 millimeters a second. And that's, that's when it's printed falsely. Now in some prints, I was getting a bit of ghosting. Uh, so I did have to reduce the acceleration and the jerk settings on the printer, but that seems to have solved the problem. And as you can see, all the prints I did, that just came out beautiful. I have this design of the, uh, of the birdhouse that I did, and that's printed in protopasta HTPLA. I did use an Euler for the filament uh, in order to print this just so it comes out a, a, a bit more consistent and avoid any clogs. I've printed the black 
Black Panther bust in uh, Prussia Men Galaxy, Galaxy Black. I printed these awesome tea light holders from my mini factory. The gold one was in Amazon Basics Gold PLA, which printed absolutely gorgeous. The red one was in Spanner Hands Pearl Red, and they, they're just beautiful. I also managed to print some uh, Filamentive Cosmic PLA, which looked once again ridiculously good. And I, I'm gonna keep on saying ridiculously good because, uh, yeah. They look ridiculously good. I then decided to switch over to PEG because I know a lot of you people will want to print PEG and so do I. Um, so I printed a couple of models as well in PEG. Some turned out better than others, but that was mostly because of my settings. In fact, um, I'm very comfortable using the Spanner Hands PEG series and the, uh, the three skull model just turned out beautiful absolutely beautiful um, I also printed a, a tea light holder a little small pot and PEG and once again they turned out good not great in this case but very good I then also decided to print some flexible so this is in spanner hands this is the flexible PLA and I also printed this cover here in TPU and once again they printed Great, uh, I did print quite a bit slow. I printed about 25 millimeters a second. The fact that it has a volcano hot end just gives the filament a bit more time to melt, um, making a more consistent extrusion and also allows you to print a little bit faster. Now there is something I need to point out here that all of these models, except two very small ones, which I'll talk about in a little bit and I'll tell you why, I've printed on the 50% assembled version of the printer. And there is a very specific reason why I did that. Over here, I have these two orange parts, and these are meant to show the, uh, the salmon skin effect on prints. Both were sliced the same way. It's the same exact G code on the same SD card, first printed on one and then printed on the other. And if you notice the 50% assembled version, has much cleaner lines, whereas the 98% assembled version seems like it has some kind of salmon skin effect. Not exactly salmon skin, but it's just, looks a bit weird to me. Um, and I wasn't extremely happy with that result. So that is why I decided to print everything on the 50% assembled version. However, I did print the make test on the 98% uh, assembled version and it, it, it printed everything that it needed to print except uh, the 0.2 millimeter tolerance because that just wouldn't budge. Everything else printed beautifully. Now those, those that salmon skin, uh, both of these printers use TMC 2100 drivers which are actually very quiet, extremely quiet. The only thing you can hear when printing with these printers is the fan, nothing else. But for some reason, the TMC 2100 drivers on the 98% assembled version seem of a lesser quality than the one on the 50% assembled version. Now, I wanted to take the printer apart to actually see the inside, but to be completely honest, it is so complicated to get to the inside of the printer that you pretty much have to disassemble it completely. And I, I really didn't want to because these will be given away and I, I just didn't want to ruin them. So I left them as it is. And I think what happened is TiVo kind of got, got a setback with the delivery of these printers and they just resorted to use the lesser quality TMCs on the 98% assembled version because that's the one that was most popular at the time. Now in my case, I prefer the 50% assembled version. Reason being is one, one, it's cheaper and two, there are certain things which I omitted from assembling when I did the live stream. And the one thing that I omitted completely was the top belt arrangement. So this comes with two brackets on the top, on the 98% assembled version, which has two pulleys and a belt. So basically, um, both Z-axis screws work in tandem. However, what also happens is you are restricting the movement of the z-axis rods whereas those should be a bit free so i decided to omit installing those and leave them free flowing and you know what the print quality that i had without those was just incredible so if you're going to get a tivo flash i highly recommend you do not stick those on so what do i like about this printer um print quality the print quality is just beautiful i 
I cannot get enough of it. And the fact that I only realized afterwards how much I have printed with this printer, um, it, it only made me think that this was one of those printers for me without even realizing that if I have a print to do, I'll just throw it on it because I know it's gonna print it. It's extremely quiet. I, I love the fact that I can have a quiet printer in here that is just not gonna give me a headache that's constantly running. Um, and to be completely honest, I find myself, I used to find myself looking over to the printer to see if it was still printing because all you could hear was the fan. The build quality is actually really solid. I like what they did with this printer. I like the way they compacted this. Now, this obviously is the direct competitor of the CR20, which I also have. The difference between the two, honestly speaking, um, the one thing that the CR20 has more than the TiVo Flash is the fact that it has the power of resume function. What the TiVo Flash has more than that is the fact that you can install TMC drivers, which make it very quiet. Um, it has the Volcano hot end, which I absolutely love. If you want to do some spaghetti printing, install like a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on the hot end so you can print in thick layers. You can do that as well. It's more consistent in terms of extrusion. And I love the fact that we have, even though it's a clone Titan extruder, it's, it's still a, a, a Titan clone Titan extruder. It also has optical end stops, which, you know, just make it more accurate as well. And if, if I had to choose between the two, honestly speaking, I think my choice would probably be the TiVo Flash, simply because of those, those little extra things, which, would just make it a great machine. And ultimately, yes, you can get an Ender 3, which is like half the price, and then you can upgrade it. But by the time you upgrade it and you put all the features that this has, then you're still gonna end up in the same water. Now, what I don't like about the printer, um, uh, very little, to be completely honest. Uh, they still use, unfortunately, cheap pneumatic couplers um, on the, uh, on the Titan extruder part, so I did have quite a bit of slack. In fact, on the 50% one, I changed that. And I also installed the Capricorn Bowden tube just to get more consistent layers. The other thing that I don't like is that they use, I think, they use very cheap fans. So, um, it worked beautifully, but at some point, I think after about five or 600 hours of printing, both the fan of the hot end and the fan that is over the main board just started making loud noises and eventually just completely died. So I had to order new fans and replace those. But other than that, to be completely honest, I think it's clean, it's compact, it looks good, it prints extremely well, it heats up really fast. And I, I dare to say it's so far, it's by far one of my favorite uh, kits out of China that I've had the pleasure of reviewing on this printer. Now, TiVo doesn't have a very good history, but I think they just hit it out of the park with this. It's it's a great machine. Unfortunately, it's not that cheap, um, but I think it's well worth the money for what it produces. And that is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Disclaimer as always, uh, TiVo sent me these two printers for an unbiased review. No money has exchanged hands. All thoughts that I, uh, that I said in this review are my own based on these two machines. And uh, yeah, I stick by them. If you want to know more about these printers, I'm going to leave links in the video description, both affiliate links and direct links to TiVo. Also, if you're stuck for valentine's and don't know what to do i'm gonna leave a link to my plant pot that i designed on my mini factory i'm also gonna leave a five percent discount code for any model uh that you would like to purchase from my mini factory so yeah i'm really proud of that i'm gonna do a video of that next week stick around make sure you like share subscribe if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below and as always happy making guys